Alright. Consensus. So, anybody have a proposition maybe for the <coughs> first reaction? Nothing? Sodamide. Sodamide? And what are we going to follow that up with? Um, so it's got two carbons already in this group six. Yeah. So if we need to have um, an additional four carbons plus a bromine there, Right. But be careful, because after we've added those carbons, we're still going to need a center where the reaction occurs that gives us our ketone. Mm -hmm. And depending on how we add the carbons to this chain, we might not have that reaction center where we want it, if that makes sense. Okay. So you might not want to add all four carbons at the same time. Because remember, this has an acidic hydrogen on either side. So if you just react, react it with, like, let's say, one bromobutane, so Br, one, two, three, four, yeah, that, then you would just stick a butane chain on one of these. You'd still have a terminal all kind. Oh, I mean, that could go to either ketone mm -hmm. or aldehyde. Yeah, but, so it could either make an enol or an aldehyde. Yeah, so you'd get an aldehyde product with that at the end, but we're getting a ketone product. So what would we want to put here? Okay, so I, I guess I'm confused about that. When is it that you decide that you want to break it up first? So good way to do that, mm -hmm. do the reaction back. So what can we make this out of? We know that starting with that, anytime we add to the chain, we're still going to end up with an alkyne product, right? It doesn't, the pi bonds aren't actually involved in this reaction. It just forms a carbanion on one of those terminal positions and adds a carbon chain onto that. So if that's the case, we know we're going to react this with some sort of alkyne. What alkyne could we react to get this and what would we react? So you kind of have to think backwards, right? So, what reaction of alkynes gives us ketones? That's one of them. That's the one you do if you've got a terminal one. You want to make sure you have the aldehyde. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually looking at it now. You actually might be able to add that on one chain. Let's try it. Let's try it with bromobutane. So what would that give you? Um, my only question with that, I guess, is how do you know that, that reaction it snips off one of the hydrogens, basically, right? Yeah. So how do you know which hydrogen is going to snip off? Well, in this case, it doesn't matter. Right, it's true. But it's it's symmetrical. Off that, right? But, yeah, so if you add another one like this, maybe, mm -hmm. it's only got one hydrogen it can choose from. If you've got two terminal hydrogens, you're always going to have acetylene. And in uh, that case, it won't matter. Yeah, in the case where you symmetrical. don't have acetylene, you'll only have the one terminal. Oh, okay. So. And then, okay. Yeah. So, in this one instance, you end up when it snips off one of the H's, it doesn't matter what, you always end up with yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. So, product? Uh, you would need that. You would. Um, you would CH3, CH2, CH2. What's the terminal alkyne with that? That. That one? It just means yeah. that So, alkyl. yeah, it means that the triple bond is to a carbon that's on the end of the chain. Oh. Terminal nah. means at the end. Okay. What's that one with not terminal? Not terminal. There's no internal. word? Internal, yeah. <laughs> or not terminal. <laughs> yeah, I think internal's the word for that. Anybody want to draw the product of that first reaction? Mm -hmm. Going for it. Uh, can you explain this so that, like, it's greater? Probably not. That's why they don't teach it okay, in third grade, but I could explain it to someone who didn't know this reaction very well. Because I have no idea. I haven't done multi-substances before. Um, I got a 44 on my last exam. Yeah. Um, so I'm 
So essentially, what we have a starting material and we have a final product. We need to start thinking about the reactions we've learned so far and think, what reactions give me what? You know. So we ended up with a ketone there. First thing you'd want to think, you look at your product and you think, how do I make a ketone? What reactions do I have that have a product that's a ketone? Yeah. The next thing you'd want to do is look at your starting material and think, what reactions do I have available to that starting material? This is an alkyne, so you've got pretty much a whole chapter's worth of reactions for that, right? So you need to start thinking, what can I do to this alkyne to get to that product knowing that my last step is going to be converting it into a ketone? So what reaction converts, like I was saying earlier, what the reaction that converts um, like that. alkynes into ketones would be adding on an alcohol, and then the alcohol undergoes ketoenol tautomerization to form the ketone. Does that sound familiar? Nope. Nope? All right. Well, we'll go over that, obviously, because it's part of this question. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, there you go. So, because you're only taking off that one H. One, so. two, three, four, five, five six. six. So there's our six-membered chain. And yeah, that's okay. going to work. So the reaction we'd want to do is, uh, what's... What's the work for the oxymercuration of oh. You can just use water and sulfuric acid. So H2O and H plus. And that'll give you that. Now that's the part that might be a little confusing. Well, because first it that um, that normal water with oxygen is actually alcohol. And then it doesn't have a resolution because it's the alcohol. Yeah. Everyone good with that structure? I was just making that linear since it's trickle down. Anyway. So, yeah, the first thing we're going to do, so what happens when we react, let's say this was instead of a triple bond, two, three, four, six, the double bond, and we reacted it with H2O and H+. Plus. So this is one of the alkene reactions that you've learned. You remember what happens in that situation? No. You've been talking this whole time. I want someone okay, else to try sorry. to take part. That's all right. I think you're probably pretty good on a lot of this stuff. So I went over this last week with you. She was the only one that came to the study session last week. And we went over nothing but alkene reactions. So you should definitely know that. I'm still getting confused with the carbo ion and the way you use it. So in this case, would you add a hydrogen to the terminal site? Markovny culture. So, you add it to the less substituted carbon. Oh, so, so yeah, the terminal side. side. So in this, are you talking about this one or that one? The alkene. The alkene? Yeah. yeah. You would add it to the terminal site. So, the double bond attacks the H plus, and you get this, and your new hydrogen bond is onto this carbon. So that hydrogen is that hydrogen. So you have a carbocation there. Is that carbocation going to rearrange both of them? Any hydride shifts? Everyone knows what hydride shift is, right? Yeah. Any two, three methyl shifts? No. All right. So we got a carbocation. The H2O is going to act as a what? Electrophile nucleophile? What's the H2O? Nucleophile. Nucleophile. Because it wants the positive charge. So it's going to go in there, and you're going to end up with this. OH, H. A positive charge on an oxygen. The oxygen's really not happy about that, so then you're going to have something, another nucleophile in solution to take that. And that's going to give you this. 
Does that seem familiar to most everybody? Get an alcohol from that reaction with an alkene? Um, yeah, normally for alkynes, it's shown as sulfuric acid, H2SO4, but all that's a strong acid, right? Gen Chem, do an ice table for that sucker. We actually took the time to plug in our PKA and everything, it's just going to pop out. Oh, you have complete dissociation. You know, you've got zero H2SO4, you've got whatever concentration of H2SO4 you had of H plus and of bisulfate. So essentially that and that are the same thing. Because in solution, that's just going to be a bunch of H plus and a bunch of bisulfate, which is going to be. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, they might show it as H2SO4 because specifically for the alkyne reaction, that acid might work better because of the reactivity of alkynes. I don't know. And, yeah, and it's just it's a common and relatively cheap acid, so okay, it's so used a lot when you need an acid. acid. And you can't use HCl, right? Because HCl reacts. Because <laughs> then you get a chlorine on there, so you have to use something. Yeah, yeah sulfate bisulfate doesn't generally like to react with organics, so that's also a good reason to use it. Ah. Yeah. So you do learn a reaction in 302 called sulfonation, though. And that involves that kind of stuff, but don't worry about that right now. So, the reaction for the alkyne and the reaction for the alkene do the exact same thing. Do the exact same steps here. We could go through and replace that double bond with the triple bond, and the exact same thing happens all the way to this point. So, if we take our double bond and turn it into a triple bond, one of the pi electrons still attaches to that. We just have a double bond here now. I have a double bond here. Aside from that, it does the exact same thing. The problem is, once we get to that point down there, this thing is an alkene, and it's an alcohol. So we call it an enol. Alkene, alcohol, enol. So this is an enol, and enols are extremely unstable because of delocalized electron That's kind of cool, we came full circle. So, yeah, what actually happens is these electrons move on to the oxygen. And the way they actually do that, though, is this hydrogen. If you drew the Newman projection of this, you would see that this hydrogen and this pi bond system are actually in very close proximity to each other. So it can attack that hydrogen and then push the bonding electrons between the oxygen and the hydrogen onto the oxygen. That gives us that. So there you go. So on the test, are we going to have to show the step from the enol to the ketone? Yes, and it's important to not do it the way I just did it. Because you don't want to show that as a single arrow, you want to show it as equilibrium arrows. But the equilibrium arrow going to the ketone is way bigger than the one from the enol. Oh, that's subsequent. I don't know where you need there's just certain times where there's technically you're getting both these products but this one's just more stable because in this case this oxygen isn't in very close proximity to the hydrogen lost anymore over there it had this ability to react to form that here it doesn't really so it's harder for this to go you know like this essentially I guess it would be from the double bond. It's harder for it to do that than it is for it to do that. So the main reason for this is um, <coughs> you still have some of this in your sample. If you were to do this in the lab and like run like an NMR on it, you would see some peaks because of that. With the IR, you would see a very weak alcohol thing. Oh, thing. That's bad. Really bad. The really like weak alcohol stretch. You know that? Have you guys done IR yet? Mm -hmm. You know that big, huge hump you get, like, yeah. toward 3,500? You would see a weak one of those if you're in a sample of this, because it's constantly tautomerizing the formula. That's what this is called, because this is a ketone. That's an enol. So this is keto enol tautomerization. So the tautomerization. Uh, okay, the, 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 the
double bar, um, it'll, the double or single bars will switch, but they'll switch between the two columns that were SP2s. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they'll switch between the alkene mm -hmm. carbons and the ketone position here. Okay. So yeah, the, the, the actual electrons, though, flip because the hydrogen that ends up in the alcohol is the hydrogen that ended up on the terminal carbon here. Okay. So it's not getting like donating hydrogens into solution and getting more hydrogens out of solution. It's actually just playing catch with that same hydrogen in this oh. tautomerization. I actually think that's what tautomers are defined as. <coughs> okay. I don't actually know what tautomer means. But I just know that's that's tautomerization. Okay. I definitely no, know that. Yeah, so point is, when if we would have known that before, if we would have all been total pros on ketoenal autonomization and whatnot, we would have looked at a ketone and thought, what do I need to make a ketone? Well, I can make that out of an alkyne. And how am I going to get an alkyne? Well, I have an alkyne. It's just not long enough. How do I make it longer? So we only needed two reactions, but we needed to think through why we chose those two, because we needed two things. We needed to go from this to a ketone, but we needed to make this longer first, because if we would have reacted this to make a ketone right away, we would have ended up with, like, you know, just a ketone. There's no way to lengthen the chain on a ketone, so that would have been a bad idea. Now, the way I was originally thinking about doing this was adding... Um, instead of a butyl branch, adding a methyl, and then adding a um, propyl branch. But the thing is, at the end, you would get 50-50 um, between the 2-hexanone and the 3-hexanone. Um, because if you had your, so that's when I realized you were right now on your own, is if you had your triple bond here, then during this process, the alcohol would not favor either of these positions over the other. They're both secondary carbons. Okay. So it could have added onto either one. So if you were to add do this as two steps, like NaNH2 and then one bromopropane and then NaNH2 and methylene or uh, bromomethane, and then do this, then you would get 50% 2-hexanone, 50% 3-hexanone, and you just want 2-hexanone. So you have to do it with the terminal, and then make sure that you do this with the oxymercuration, because if you were to do the hydroboration, it would give you the aldehyde product. I do know how to use the bromobutane. Good question. All right. So in chain extensions, what happens if I just don't use the bromobutane first off? If I just react this with an ANH2, what's my product? I heard that. <laughs> so what happens here is sodium, this is called sodium amide, sadium, sodium, <laughs> sodium amide. Amide is NH2 minus. It's got two electron pairs like that. And that's what I like to call a super base. Super base. Now, the reason this is a super base is in Gen Chem, you learn the rule that, like, if you have an acid that's a weak acid, then the conjugate base is a strong base. Well, this is the conjugate base of ammonia, and ammonia is not even an acid, it's a weak base already. So we took a weak base and forced it to act as an acid. What are you doing here? I need background noise. So we took a weak base, forced it to act as an acid. Or I mean, yeah, forced it to act as an acid to form this conjugate base, so it's a super base. It's extremely, extremely basic. Another one you might see is H minus hydride. So this is amide. This is hydride. That's a, another super base. And that's because, well, I mean, you're used to seeing H plus. If you make an H minus, it's the opposite, you know. H plus is really favorable, so making an H minus probably isn't very favorable. It probably really, 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 really wants to donate that electron pair. Just like this does. It wants to donate that electron pair, get a hydrogen, and form ammonia, because it does not like being amid. We made it really angry when we intended it to be so. And we have a weakly acidic hydrogen line around, because... Terminal alkynes, the hydrogens are weakly acidic. You guys remember that? No? Maybe? Yes. Terminal alkynes, hydrogens, weakly acidic. Yes? No? Maybe? Maybe? 
weekly acidic. So it's not really acidic if you just put it in with like your everyday base. It might react a little bit, it might not, who knows. Put it in with a super base, that sucker's going to react. So essentially what we're going to do is form, we're going to have NH2 minus take that hydrogen. And since it's an acidic hydrogen, acidic hydrogens leave their electrons behind. Right? Like H2O formed OH minus. It lost some H plus. It kept the electrons that it was bonding to the hydrogen. So this is actually going to form a carbanion on the triple bond. No, it doesn't. But that would be your product if all you used was NaNH2. That's all you get. That's when we react it with some Rx group, where X is a halogen, bromine, chlorine, whatever you want to use. R is some carbon chain. So... Halogens, delta minus, right? They're electronegative. So whatever carbon this halogen's attached to is delta plus. Well, we just formed a carbon ion, and carbon ions are really, really reactive, right? They're really strong nucleophiles. So whatever that carbon chain is, this carbon ion wants some. It's going to go in, attack that R, push the electrons off to, onto the X, whatever the X is, could be bromine. And we're going to form H... Chlorine, fluorine, iodine, just don't use that. No? No. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't like him because he's a semi metal or something, I don't know, but you just don't really see him with the other halogens that often, you know? Anyway, there you go. So, how do we know to use the one we used? We used uh, one bromobutane. How do we know to use one bromobutane? Well, we wanted to figure out what our group did we need. We knew if we worked backwards from here that we added on, here's our two carbons we already had, one, two, three, four more carbons. If we want to add four more carbons, our R group is going to be four carbons long. And the reason we made it one bromo is because whatever carbon the halogen is attached to, that's the same carbon that attaches to your carbon ion right here. So if we would have used like this instead of, so two bromo, butane instead of one bromobutane, we would have attached right here on the second position, and we would have formed like that. That's definitely not what we wanted, because that's that second position that it attached to, so we would attach right here. You guys seeing that at all? That, just a little bit? Yeah, that thing all right, it's kind of tiny. Yeah. Is everyone good on the multi-step? Can I start erasing that? No. <laughs> okay, so, um, transition thing, like, why do you make the H on the end of the transition? Why is it so? I don't know. Do you want the H? Or? I do want the H. And then it's that. It's only that magic thing. The actual, like, that's on the end. It'll be zero right there. But that's not the H it left. It left this H. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, I didn't know why she did it. I just assumed she knew what she did. No, I just... I didn't care. Like I, I thought the H was Apparently, we just like that hydrogen. I'm all right with that. I don't have any problems with that hydrogen, so I was just ready to leave it, but... Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... So, that thing I just drew really tiny, so you have to squint. Anybody want to come up? Anybody have problems with that? They can walk up here. Don't don't worry about don't worry about the swivel. <laughs> only get the back of your head. Okay, that didn't help. The government's watching our YouTube. Propel at CSUP. All right. So yeah, whatever carbon is bonded to the halogen. So I've drawn this as R X, where R is just some carbon chain, and X is the halogen. That R is going to attach to the carbon ion, right? But it's going to attach uh, at the point where it was bonded, because that's the point you're getting your delta plus. Uh, so I've shown a delta plus yeah, and a delta okay. minus, and this acting as a nucleophile. Okay. The actual point of that positive dipole end is on the carbon directly attached, so okay. that's going to be the carbon you draw attached to your triple bond. Okay, I get it. I get so it. the reason we wanted to use one bromobutane uh -huh. 
is because it has the bromine on the end, which means we're going to attach on the end and get this nice, long, straight carbon chain. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. She gets it. Anybody else who came up there? No? You got it? Sweet. All right. So now is everyone good on that multi-step synthesis? Make sense to everybody? All right. Let's practice another one. Yeah, we can do another multi-step, or if there's something else you guys want to go over, we can do that. So what do you mean like basicity like the stuff that was on the first exam? No, 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 like the stuff in here, like there's something about like there's like alkynes are more basic. Well, that's because, well, alkynes are more acidic. Okay, all kinds are more acidic than the S than the um, than the LPs and the LPs more acidic than the LPs. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this video.